Welcome to 10th Year Seniors uh, NFL Week 13 podcast. And uh, we got some things to talk about. I'm out of football. I'm out. I'm done. Portal service. <laughs> we'll explain that later. But uh, for now, we're going to talk about uh, that Patriots-Packers game last night. That was a That was a shootout, wasn't it? That was probably one of the better games of the season. I don't like, know if shootout's the word you want to use two, for it. it was, we had the two best uh, two best quarterbacks in the league going out of head-to-head. And it was like, you know, who controls a conch? Let's put it this know, way. Who whoever, has the juice in the league? Whoever paid for the, that game to go watch it live got their money's worth. The entire game. <laughs> Back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> so cliche. Sean didn't reach deep into the cliche bag at all for that one. That was just sitting right at the top. Oh, yeah. It was right well there. worth the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you had, as Nal dubbed it, uh, the Hulk versus Superman. Superman being, of course, Mr. Aaron Rodgers, who fed off the sun and destroyed Tom Brady, crushed his dreams, made him cry. Made and gave Giselle, Dolphin fans hope. Made Giselle go to bed early. Yeah. She does get tired. all that, you know. So Olivia Munn won, Giselle zero, Rogers won, Brady zero. Okay, yeah, they kind of played. It's it. good week for that couple because Newsroom had a really good episode. Good too. week for them. Yep, they Great were week killing for that it. Couple. My fa- my favorite NFL couple. I don't know about Brady and Giselle. I mean, I know Giselle models, but I I mean, I don't know how they rate them or whatever. So uh, I can't he has not they. won a Super Bowl since they started dating. That's so, true. Yeah. So it's her fault. That's true. Hey, people have been saying that for years. You don't think it has anything to do with the fact that he uh, he got his baby mom, his actual baby mom, pregnant and then told her to peace out? Nah. No. No. It's all just no, 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 no. no. That really. seemed pretty reasonable. So, But that game had a play. It felt like I was watching a playoff game, though. I think Playoffs. I think that was the most engaged that I've been for any football game this season. It felt like a sun. It, like I said, it felt like the wild card round already. Like, not not even the wild card round. I yeah, felt every like every, division every, pass, or every run we were like, come on, we were rooting for the Packers. So come on, Packers, get it, it was, done. It's like every play had so much invested behind. Like you could tell the difference between the effort that they were giving and the effort you were seeing earlier in the season from these teams. Yeah, like but, take for instance the Packers we saw in Week One that looked afraid to test Richard Sherman. They didn't look like anybody's contender. But this right. Packers team... Remember, Rogers, was Rogers knows how to, to spell relax. relax. Yeah, yes. he, he knows how to spell it. Relax. Do you think this um, games like this is where um, the Patriots' lack of weapons uh, comes back to haunt them? Because, I mean... See, nobody really had... Uh, I mean, and Gronk, f- Gronk and Adelman did work. I don't know if you could say that it's the lack of do. weapons because of how well their offense has been playing for like this yeah. past seven weeks. Yeah. Like, Gronk was doing well. Edelman was destroying people. They looked unbeatable until they ran up against this Packers team. So, so they just ran at the proverbial yeah. buzz. So I think what they it remi- ran into Superman. What it reminded me of is when, well, we know the Packers traditionally, they don't have this edition of the Packers traditionally doesn't have good defenses. But the year that they won the Super Bowl, they were able to string it together great, for a couple yeah. of weeks. Like, they may not be a traditional powerhouse defense, but they played well enough. They had timely stops on the Patriots. Because I mean, there were times when they were getting into that game, but they came up with a, a timely stop. But in this era of football, you don't really need... I mean, I guess the Seahawks had... One, I, I was just about to say. No, the Seahawks had a great defense, but, I mean, most of the Super Bowl champions in, in the last 10 years don't really have historically but great But you, you know what they do have? I mean, the defenses you, get hot yeah, as, I, right before yeah, the playoffs definitely. start. Like, one thing that sticks out in my mind more than anything is the Peyton Manning team that won the Super Bowl had awful run defense Lose. right up until Lose when the playoffs together, started. Yeah. yeah, and then they became, like, an elite defense. Even, like, um, New Orleans when they won. Like, yeah, definitely. That was... Yeah, nobody expected Jonathan Vilma did yeah. just enough to, to do what they had to Roman do. Roman Harper was getting pick sixes and whatnot. Like, that was nuts. Name drop. Solid name drop. Sharper was in doing so, illegal things. <laughs> so that Patriot loss, you know, it gave a, a glimmer of hope to... Which is the, now lost. Which it, is now lost. Here we <laughs> it go. It gave a g- glimmer of hope to Dolphin fans. Because so many things happened yesterday. It's on the way it was toward like, being lost. Yeah, it's, it's on the way toward yet. being lost as the Monday night so, game so is the being second played. quarter, I mean. Let's, so let's so many things happened that were favorable for the Dolphins, even though they didn't play yesterday. We had a Patriots loss. We had the Chargers, who the Dolphins beat. They won uh, by one point. They beat Baltimore. the Ravens, so we needed the Ravens to lose. The Chiefs lost. So many good things were happening for Miami. We were so pumped, and now they're out there losing to the Jets. It's being tough. I mean, Buffalo won too. So. Yeah. I mean, so I, I just, like, in my head, I was like, so you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. We could do it. We If we ran the table, we would have the division pretty much. 
I mean, we would need the Patriots to lose. Why are we talking about this? This is what the Dolphins do. It's like making a deal with the devil yeah, every no. year. Like, you you play 10 games, and then you decide, hey, we couldn't make the playoffs if this, this, and this. And then every Dolphin fan turns into, like, a calculus professor. But then and everything... I every, told y'all, don't let them Everything do happens, right? And then... They, they suck. Are, they are who we I've thought they were. I've been saying this from... What what was it week three or four? Do not let them reel you all back they in. Will, Do you know not what? let it happen. They're not reeling me back in. I'm you were no. Just they, went they, they didn't reel. The they, you just. I was lying. <laughs> it's unreliable narrator. Of course, I was lying myself. They had I us. put it on the board because I believe it could happen. They they had us. That's, speaking of another have team, who, <laughs> we're gonna talk about another team who are what we thought they were, the Cowboys. They're on the way to that eight and eight record. Everybody predicted that was a, yeah. that was a spectacular loss to the Eagles. I, I think they it get was, yeah. it was really that was, was, I think they really get one more loss. win though. I think they'll get that. They'll be yeah. like nine. They, they got the Giants, and you know who beat the Giants? Everybody. <laughs> the Blake cow, the Cowboys Bortles. kind of barely beat the Giants. Ca- and they, I mean, we we tried hard to lose that game, but that Eagles win was a signature win for the Eagles. How'd you try hard? To I lose was never the game when a big. I was never a big Cowboys fan, and I absolutely despise their fan base. But I'm kind of bummed out that they're just collapsing and doing what everybody expected. I kind of like this actually. Like this, you don't want it to be the easy narrative, right? Yeah, you want something new to happen, like make the playoffs, like shock us. I like that they were doing this. I like that Des Bryant was. For, you know, people still. I feel like there's a groundswell of opinion against Des Bryant still for some reason, even though he really doesn't get. Is it because he problems. slapped his mom? Is that the thing? Did he really? Yeah. Do they still have their babysitter oh. for him? I guess they <laughs> need to give their babysitter a raise if they still have him. Or her. I had you no idea. Des Bryant babysitter. Thing. Oh, yeah. I had no idea. Des Bryant Remember slapped that, his like, mom. Remember, like the. Uh, it was a, one of the running backs for the Cowboys got arrested for a DUI, and he's like, oh, this shouldn't be too much trouble because Dez got out of trouble. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Dez played the next game. Do you hear about, oh. uh, you hear about uh, DeMarco Murray sleeping with his uh, his roommate yep. from Oklahoma's wife? Yep, and then he got blown up on Twitter <laughs> on the, his off day. He got blown up on Twitter, and he was like, well, I'm going to go to church now. <laughs> Well, that's yeah. that's the Cowboys uh, for you. you. That's such a Cowboys thing. That but it was happened. such a uh, awesome. Like you know, like Deadspin has the top comments, right? And then one guy, because the uh, lady who Demarco Murray is cheating with, her name is Gina. So the guy was like, not only did they share carries at Oklahoma, I guess they shared Gina's. And then <laughs> the very next comment was someone put, "Bah, bah Gina. <laughs> amazing." Thank you, Deadspin. Always bringing it. Deadspin. Oh, those guys in the comment section, they bring it every time. It's really all about the comments. The comments. Are like sometimes I don't even I like read two sentences of the article. Let's go to the comments because I'll get the real <laughs> that story that going. That meme was created for Deadspin. Deadspin yes. comment. But like um, and then Sanchez just did his thing. I mean, he finally. I mean, he had good games where he managed to win it, but he always managed to do a pick. But he somebody's and, gonna have to. There's gonna have to be somebody that is able to differentiate guys that are just a part of the Chip Kelly system and are thriving in that or they're actually good. Because only only Nate Silver can do that. But he took I, a step. I, can't tell the I mean, difference. I mean, he was he was doing good within the system, but I mean, he really, I mean, Shady doing his thing on the ground probably, I mean, had a big deal. Did you see that. how happy he was when he scored a touchdown? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Sean McCoy. Sean like, McCoy came back from the dead. But I mean, but Sanchez was like swagging, like keeping it on the read option and all so kinds of stuff. So was Nick Foles. Yeah. Nick Foles is not keeping it on the read option. Nick Foles didn't have to. Nick Foles was going through games where he threw like two incomplete passes out of like thirty, and yeah. that was a common occurrence. And so five like touchdowns. I said, yeah, I can't tell when these guys, if these guys are actually good or if they're just products of what Chip Kelly's doing. Sanchez but it's a quarterback friendly system. That's that's the biggest thing. It's quick, short passes. And I'm still surprised that Mark Sanchez can thrive in a quarterback friendly system. I'm surprised he can thrive in any system. I wish he was back on the Jets. You think DeMarco Murray? <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. Remember when we predicted that DeMarco Murray would break? You think this is uh this is about it? He may be. I mean. Because, I mean, he had 24, I mean, 73 yo, yards. He has, he has some bad karma out there right now. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah, bro- uh, that's apparently what it is. All up in Gino. He's using you know, his energy he, in other, other <laughs> things. Apparently, he broke Gino. <laughs> hey yo, G- Gino broke him. And talking about uh, the Crazy. Cowboys and staying in the NFC, let's go to a team that was making some noise. John, play the sound. So we are talking about the Arizona Cardinals, who have lost two in a row. And is it over? It over. Is it over, Tate? I think it's been over Oops. since uh, since um, Carson Palmer got hurt, I think. Yeah, yeah. it really yeah. has been. I mean, nobody was expecting Drew Stanton to... But he did his they, thing. they won without Carson Palmer, though, but Fitzgerald yeah. didn't play this game as well. But to get stomped by... The Atlanta Falcons? They, yeah. Who's, they're because barely a You remember when I, I turned the game on, and it's just 17, but like, what? 
What the hell's going on? Like, legitimately they, like, confused. They won. It wasn't like they were winning because of Drew Stanton or even with Drew Stanton. They were winning despite Drew Stanton being their quarterback. So you never felt like that was a long term solution or even even a effective stopgap solution. You felt that as soon as Carson Palmer got hurt, that was it for the Cardinals. So and it's a shame. So look at the schedule they have the next. They have the Chiefs. Oh, they have the 49ers. The Rams. Too. Loss. The, the Seahawks and Loss. the 49ers. Loss. They can lose. I'm about to get rough. This season. <laughs> it's about to get ugly. They not- they, if they lose out, what will their record be? Will- 97. 97. 97. They're still at 9 right now. The, the, so they really got to win that Rams They beat game. the Cowboys, right? Yeah, they got to win yeah. that Rams I mean... Yo, I think they beat the Niners though. That's the thing. The, the way oh, the yeah, Niners, the Niners yeah, can't yeah. score twenty they, points. They will beat the Niners, but I mean, but can Miami the Cardinals Dolphin score twenty coach. points though? Uh, Not right yeah, now. I don't know because I I know San Fran can't, but I don't know if the Cardinals can. That that's not, that seems like a seventeen think, to sixteen. But I think game. the Rams and Seahawks would beat them for sure. Like I don't know what the Chiefs are. Like, Look how they, much confidence people have in the Rams now. Yes. You Isn't know why? They're good karma. They, they did the hands up, don't shoot, salute. Oh my God! Hands up! Don't shoot. Okay, we're, we're gonna get. How did? How did we're we not? Okay. <laughs> when, okay, but like they, they, they look like a nice team though. They, they just won Jameis Winston away from, uh, from, from getting it. Segue into your next point. Okay, and talking about the Rams, who put up fifty-two on the Raiders, and they began the game with a, with, with a hands up salute protest, um, in support of the protests that are going on in Ferguson right now. So I know what my opinion on it is. So I'll let you guys go in first. You want to before delve into? We, before we get into that, I guess I, <clears throat> I need to get this joke out there. I guess Derek Carr really listened when they said "stop, don't shoot." <laughs> Ooh, uh, uh, I feel like that was every white person's joke as soon as they saw that. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, though, my um, I think Carr. She knew a friend was at that game. Hey, Carr. Hey, yeah, Carr. Hey, Carr. And she said, like, people actually cheered him on. You think, like, because you think St. Louis, like. That gesture wouldn't be seri- uh, that popular amongst uh, Cardinals fans, but she said they got a hefty ovation when they did that. Rams fans, yeah. Uh, you know what? Ha- you know what I think happened though. The Tell Raiders, happened. the Raiders put their hands up in like the second quarter, and that yeah. was it. Yeah. That's the joke I got thought you were gonna you. go with. Now, me and John made that joke yeah. yesterday. Oh, when you John come out, I didn't make that joke. I feel like when you come out and you make a John. statement like that, you make a political conscious, conscientious statement like that. You better run by fifty-two points. You don't have I mean, to I don't think it's that much of a politically conscious statement, though. I mean, f- we can't expect that athletes live in a vacuum where it's just sports. Think, and but they they but, they are members of society, and, just like the rest of us. Everything that happens affects them. They want to talk about it. They have opinions on it. Just but like it's just like do. with the Heat last year, or or whenever Trayvon got shot, the Heat did it. Nobody ever said, "Oh, that's such an awful thing." Statements were never coming out. All right. I mean. It's, no, but I mean, in a situation like that, especially with uh, with sports athletes making protests, like I always talk about how I don't think um, sports should be taken too seriously. But there are times that there are like when um, segregation was happening during the civil rights era, sports protests and black athletes playing these sports, letting people become comfortable just with a black person you know, like being in your home. The more All of that stuff was important and it's extremely important. Especially them being uh, from Missouri, them doing it right there in front of all their fans to be like, listen, we disagree with what happened. And w- essentially, what are the protests saying? They're putting their hands up saying, don't shoot me. It's, it's nothing uh, aggressive or confrontational. It's saying, don't shoot. I'm the same as you. Just, you and know. you know what's Frankly, funny? Too? Oh, sorry. Go I'm ahead. sorry. I was just... um. Because I feel like if this was a couple years ago, Roger Goodell would have tried to get him. Mm-hmm. Roger Goodell But now, yeah. this is the perfect time to do something like that. Because Roger Goodell... You he, know, can't and he won't do anything to them because he is at his all time most unpopular. If he did yeah. something, Not he that. would look he, so he's bad. He's on a slippery slope because if he said if he did something, then they would try to oust him. I really had like an evil, evil thought. I'm like, what if they did it after one of the touchdowns? Then what would they do? Because Camarillo, oh not Camarillo, <laughs> Hartline, our, the, all the other Dolphins wide receiver, he got fined for uh, and putting. penalized for putting. So if one of the Rams players had scored a touchdown, then did the hands up gesture, would they have gotten a, f- like, a flag and a but, fine? You know, I was reading some comments and they were saying the the referees did it like eighteen times that game. <laughs> Dead spin again. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, really oh, oh, oh! Really see, That's serious good. things can be funny. <laughs> that was funny. You know yeah, and like I was saying, I really don't think athletes do it enough. I mean, yeah, it should have been happening more, quite frankly. I think this is they a- have this platform. Everybody listens to them, especially a younger generation of Americans. And that's national well, not just TV Amer- too. It's not, not just like- Americans. Every right. everybody does, you know, 
while you have that platform, you should do something with it. And older athletes from the generation, like what Kari was talking about, they say it all the time. They can't believe that these athletes have this kind of leeway, this kind of power, and they don't take advantage of it to spread a positive message. Like, even when the Clippers went through the Donald Sterling thing and their gesture was to throw their wear the jerseys inside out or the jackets yeah, shirts, inside jar yeah. and then place it to the center of the court and protest. People were saying that they should have done more for that. So there's always room for athletes who have, like Nal said, that stage just to do more. You're still a citizen of the world just because you're a wealthy professional like, athlete doesn't mean your societal yeah. contribution has to stop. Like if the Rams players came out with NWA F the police doing that, <laughs> then that mean, would that would be that a problem. Maybe, maybe yeah. that yeah. would have been That would have been much. inappropriate. <laughs> that would have been but, a little bit much. I think, I guess too, um, I guess for the past 20, 30 years, um, athletes grew up in the Michael Jordan Republicans buy shoes to era. Yeah. Whereas when he was growing up, he had um, like um, Bill Russell and um, Jim Brown and Muhammad Ali, those conscientious guys. And then I guess when Jordan, it was just so much money at stake to remain apolitical. And I think now with LeBron and, um, and the stuff those guys did, we kind of getting back to the conscientious athlete. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I guess it does. I, I guess they see that they're on the right side of history, you know what I mean? I mean, like, because you can t- look at it two ways. You can look at it as it's an easy stance to go to and that you're just trying to make the crowd clap in one instance. But in the other instance, you're an athlete, you're someone who's exposed to the public, and you can see the negative comments that came in. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just from the Rams doing it. I don't think that Miko was... Miko posted the picture, and she got negative... Miko Grimes. Yeah. Call Miko. Hey, Miko. She got negative feedback just from people commenting under it that, no, this should just be about football. This should just be about nah. that. Yeah, maybe you're not as eloquent as Ben Watson. You know, maybe that this was their way to do yeah. it. They couldn't pen that but this, however in... long it was. Ben Watson's making the rounds at every cable TV station because... Would they're he... in the same state, so, I mean, it's a bigger thing yeah. for them to do. It, then if someone in Miami did it, it wouldn't it wouldn't hit it home. That's I, that's the only thing they could make it be like. You know what? We really care about this, and I remember this what needs Bomani, to be done. And the thing is, I don't think it's that easy a stance to take at that place. Because I remember what Bomani Jones said on his podcast last week when the um when the verdict came out when he said that prosecutor did what the voters in St. Louis County wanted him to do. You know what I mean? They they so that stance that they took might not be. As easy stance to take. It might have been controversial there. It might not have been as popular um, in St. Louis. So uh, another point, controversial thing that happened uh, this week. Uh, it, it happened oddly enough on Black Friday um, <laughs> because the NFL wanted to sneak this one in. Ray Rice. Oh, I got another one. Go ahead. Black Friday or Black Eye Day. <laughs> Too soon. All right, back to Ray Rice. <laughs> so yes, Ray Rice won his appeal and he is eligible to play again because Roger Goodell is a liar and he has but awful judgment and doesn't know what he's you doing. You get suspended and ten years. Do not call Roger Goodell a liar. Everybody, we don't knew, have an NFL contract yet. Oh. Everybody knew that Ray Rice was going to win. It was just it was no, the easiest. You know why? Easy because what? Because you can't a- you can't go double jeopardy. Because he was oh, no. I think what what helped him too was. <laughs> You can't, <laughs> but I think he was very forthcoming from the jump. Like if you read, um, if you saw the press conference when he he actually said in the press conference, I remember saying that he hit her. Yeah, and he yeah. was complete, and he said that to the um, I I heard somebody say that he said that to the commissioner when they asked him what happened because, because he assumed that they saw the tape and they did see the tape, so he was completely honest from the jump. I mean, you know, you're pretty bad when you make a guy who knocked his wife out look like. The victim. How terrible is Roger Goodell for making Ray Rice the victim in this situation? Like, even as this story came back up, I had to go in my head and be like, wait a minute. He did what? Oh, no, no. Don't pick up Ray Rice. Right. You want to pick up Ray Rice. I mean, mean, we down 10 nothing right now, so it's looking rough. Can you get me five yards to carry? I mean, I don't mean to sound insensitive. The thing is, he can't. He was only getting three yards to carry. Yes, but there's still always hope. Yes. With somebody that has displayed that kind of talent. Let's go after I'm Adrian, not certain. Adrian, he has, Adrian Peterson. He Let's has a proof. I'm fine with that. Point but if, to we prove. Can't get, if we can't get Adrian Peterson, I'm fine with, with settling for a Ray Rice. But yeah. is, is Roger Goodell going to be like disciplined in any kind of way? Like All he's done is just like fade into the back. Who is he Which kind of means though? that he's working less. Yeah, who he's, is going to do He's, not a, he's, he's accountable owners. to the owners. The owners. That's okay, but, he's, so but he's making the money, though. They're still, he's still in charge. And, but and anyone will make the money. You could put me in there and I'll be making the NFL money. And they'll, fu- they'll fire him. You and can't that have like, be the end of it. Yeah, you? UCF weeks if John is commissioner. I don't think that would work. <laughs> yeah, but no, not, not I don't think so. That's not going to really I don't think they're going to get rid of him as long as they're making money. Now, if if he becomes a problem to the point where 
people started to boycott him or sponsors started to pull out, then something might happen. But I don't see, like, I think he's just going to wait this one out. I, I doubt, I mean, sponsors, that, that's a hard, they're making money off that too. I don't know, you know what I mean? I don't know how long it would take for this to die down, but it looks like he's trying to wait this one out. All right, so that's going to do it for 10th year seniors of uh, football coverage. We know exactly what's going on in football. I picked every game right this week. If you want to hear uh, some of my picks, uh, you can't have them because that's how I pay my rent. But, yeah, all these games, I knew exactly what was going to happen. The Dolphins are down 10 nothing into the second quarter right now. They're going to come back and win this game. 45 is 10. Oh, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm so. done with football, by the way. My Giants just lost to the Jaguars. You Portal should be service. You should be embarrassed. I'm, you know what it is? I watched the game. It was fantastic. They I were did. down 21-0. <laughs> and then Blake Bortles brought her in a UCF-ness. John, take us out. <laughs> game winning drive. <laughs> okay. Field goal. Tage. Bortles. Bortles. Portal service. Hey, anyway, bye NFL. I'll see you in 2015. I hate you, uh, Tom Coughlin. Uh, I'll take it out. Uh, this is 10th year seniors, and we are out. We know everything about the NFL. We don't get tired. Stay woke. Stay woke.